right? So my front end is making all sorts of crunchy noises, and I definitely should have replaced the front differential uh, when I knew about this. Um, I made a video a while back. I went down to Kentucky to change the fluid when I was down in Kentucky uh, to realize that there was a crap load of water from when we went mudding and actually I ripped off the front vent. So basically just a lot of water got in and like cooked the bearings. At this point, those bearings are making some crunchy noises now. I've known about it forever. I went down to fix something or to work on Alex's stuff down in Texas. Uh, I've known about it. I've known about it for a while and now it's slowly starting to creep up on me. And now it's at the point where, oof, it's making some crunchy noises. So I'm going to get on a live stream later and see if I can't figure out a solution with you guys. Uh, you guys at this point, the live stream will already be over, but I haven't even started it yet as of this point in the video. So we'll see what we come up with. Uh, the ones that attend will know exactly what's going on and the ones that didn't, Let's go over it now. Well guys, I guess it's time to show you what is going on. And this is why I like to work the early shift. Look at that. They're all fighting for spots. I got this one way earlier. So I got the rotor here. I got the um, dually adapter here. I got the axle sitting here. There's a wheel bearing sitting there. There we go. Wheel bearing, we got a caliper. Oh, look at that. Somewhere in there, there's broken parts. So, also, I need a tie rod in. Here's what we're gonna do. Somebody actually stopped by earlier from the stream and dropped me off two cutoff discs. So, much appreciated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and cut this U-joint out and then put this axle shaft back in the bearing. And then, I'm gonna slap this all back together, okay? That's gonna be fun. I accidentally hit the brakes earlier, so hopefully uh, I didn't destroy that caliper, but we shall see. So I'm gonna start cutting this thing. took a little while we finally got it just gonna throw this bit back in the uh, wheel bearing and send it all right well we got it so I had people tell me that I don't need to put this nut back on I'm just gonna do it because 50% said you do need it 50% said you don't I assumed you did in the beginning anyway so like I said I'm just gonna do it for peace of mind. You can see. Now I'm just trying to find the washer. That, I lost that the second I pulled it off. Here's everything sitting. It's like 24 degrees right now, but I'm gonna get that taken off even if I don't need to. All right, so I'm just gonna put this in the video anyway. Um, after last night getting all of this stuff cut out, because I do know that this front end is shot no matter what, so I had to do that eventually. But I don't think that that was actually my grinding noise. Now the funny thing is, I usually check this carrier bearing uh, religiously because of the issues that I've had. I checked it before I made this trip and everything was perfectly fine. Well, now there's bearings and yeah, I'd say I found my grinding noise, but so that was not in vain. That needed to be done because I do need a front end. So I'm just gonna leave that as is, but that might not have needed done last night. But it is what it is. So it made interesting content, whatever. That needed to be done eventually. Here's us throwing a carrier bearing in it. I had to cut the old one off. Here's the carrier bearing. Cut the old one off. And then I used this as a race to kind of push down on this bearing to get this pressed on. So now we're gonna throw it back up in the truck. So anytime you do suspension, brakes, uh, anything to do with the drive shaft or any of that, unfortunately you do have to keep an eye on it because the first time your bolts may come loose from, you know, if you drive like an excessive amount of miles, usually somebody will do this stuff and then they'll drive, what, like 10, 15 miles tops. Uh, so in this case, I got 560 miles to drive and next 
time I stop for fuel, I am 100% gonna stop and check every single one of those bolts that I touched. Uh, it's just one of those things you're gonna wanna do. I've had caliper bolts come loose on me. Um, I've had carrier bearing bolts come loose on me. Uh, this was years ago, but it's just one of those things that you need to be mindful of. And if you're not mindful of it, it will come back to bite you in the ass. So yeah, we're gonna get rolling. It's already sounding smoother. I'm gonna keep an eye on those wheel bearings and the new, I hate these carrier bearings. I have never seen a carrier bearing actually do that. I've had every one of them break the rubber. Not one of them has ever destroyed the bearing. In this case, I destroyed the bearing. But it will be nice driving down the road and not hearing noise from either or because my front end has been making noise for six months and I've replaced my carrier bearing twice in that time. So I know it wasn't just, the, I mean the carrier bearing in this case was making the grinding noise, but that front end has been making that noise before I've replaced the carrier bearing that two times, so. All right, so when I get back to Pennsylvania, I'm just gonna go end up uh, getting the front end looked at or rebuild one or the other. I don't know that I feel like swapping everything. I just don't feel like it, I don't know. I'll at least get it looked at. I'm gonna get uh, either new axles or new U-joints for the axles that I cut. I'm gonna look into getting a new drive shaft at some point because mine is just absolutely terrible. I actually did check the carrier bearing yesterday before looking at the front end and it was fine. Like I said, I do check it pretty religiously just because of the fact that I know I've always had carrier bearing problems with this truck. All right, so if you guys ever want a way to do some rust prevention, look at that. So, from doing that, the whole side is covered in rust prevention. And under the frame, all of that. So, should be getting rid of our rust problem here pretty easily. All right, so here's what a zero plate looks like floored. There's all my gauges there. 1170 on the EGT, 32 pounds of boost, 68 mile an hour, 203 on the coolant temp. And EGTs aren't out of control, so that's good. We're just chugging along. This is the hill with the corner issues, so we'll see how this does. 1190 on the EGTs. Again, this is a zero plate in the stock position and a carefully tuned AFC housing. Been on this hill now for about a minute. Uh, there you can see the gauges. Uh, 1200 on the EGTs, 66 mile an hour. Throttle is all the way down at 30 pounds of boost. And it's just chugging. It's doing pretty good. I'm, uh, again, I know I said it before, but I'm kind of happy with it. All right, we're gonna do our pre-trip this morning. Every bulb on the passenger side and since the cab lights were run to the passenger side, every bulb was out on this side. Uh, the marker lights, not the turn signals or the brake lights. And back here, all the side lights, it turned out to be a fuse. I also found a fuse for the battery charging system to be blown, so going through and make sure all my tires are good. And then we're going to drop off at the port. Make sure my plate is still there. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, I hate getting up this late, but they couldn't get me in until 9 o'clock. It's about 8.35 right now. I'm like eight minutes away. So that's what we're going to do. Gonna head out. Inside the hell out of it. Well, we got it. Make sure there's no damages. Taking our pictures now. I'm gonna grab my plate. All right. Well, we're unhooked. Uh, the place we're doing the work for, they take the battery back, and then I had to go grab my plate. But other than that, so here's where it's gonna sit. I kind of had to jackknife it to get it in. You can kind of see one tire's facing in, one's out. I don't know. Uh, these things, they don't really get parked perfectly straight because I try to get them in the lines and it's like this guy's over the line, this guy's over the line. So it's like, and this, these guys parked in the different way. So it's like, it is what it is. No big deal. Just waiting on our paperwork now. Pay the lady and uh, we'll get out of here and then we're headed to New Jersey. 
You ever just pay somebody $50 an hour to sit at a port? That's basically what I'm doing is, I was hoping to get in out in a half an hour like I usually do. Today is not seeming to be the case. It seems like it's really busy. But the trailer's dropped. I'm just waiting to pull off and pay. Yeah, it's looking like we're gonna run into our second hour, unfortunately, but it is what it is. So check this out. I think I finally got this sorted. So I bought these from Loves. Uh, I don't recommend them. I threw every one of them out and I replaced them with the tub of towels like I always use. These things are awesome. So I took the tub of towels and put them in this, and this fits perfectly in the cup holder, just like my paper towels do. Unfortunately, when they get low, like this doesn't fit anymore, so it just falls over. So I'll just leave that up there till it's empty. But we got hand cleaners and the paper towels, and then my cup holders up here. So I kind of like this setup. And then charge stuff down here. My trash bags will go in there. Ignore the ketchup packets. Those That's only temporary. Um, but other than that, I just need to find a spot to put my GoPro batteries. But other than that, I mean, I think it's coming out good. I just need to figure out, I'm gonna get a toolbox for like spare clothes and my duffel bag so everything can sit in the toolbox. So fifth wheel toolbox is in the plans. I gotta get an inverter today or tomorrow. Oh look, our guy's showing up finally. They're just cruising through. I found another noise that was pretty obnoxious. And then when I was trying to pull out and do that camper, I found that it was almost impossible to do a U-turn in a tight space because I couldn't turn the wheel. So, I went and got power steering fluid. I bought four of them, even though I only needed one, so I have spare fluid. But I did that, and then I also went and filled up the front tires. There must be a slow leak in them because they were both down to 30, which is odd, which would explain why that I'm getting wear the way that I am in the front. So I am going to go get an inverter either tomorrow or maybe even today if I stop at a Walmart so that I can charge my batteries on my Milwaukee and then I can use the air compressor more because I tried to use the air compressor and after the other night's fiasco with the uh, the grinder, uh, that didn't seem to work. But other than that, we're in New Jersey and this sucks. There's my times. I'm gonna check the fuel economy after uh, cruising through with a couple with this trailer and see what uh, what I'm gonna get. So with the two wheel drive conversion. But don't worry, the second I get back into Pennsylvania, I will be getting that fixed before I go back out because I just, I don't know, it makes me uncomfortable not having a four, four wheel drive if I need it. I've actually broken the rear diff before and four wheel drive was the only way that got me home. It was like 150 miles from New Jersey to PA, so the four-wheel drive has paid for itself a couple of times now and saved my ass. All right, here it is. This one's pretty decent, and it's plated. Should be registered, I'll ask. We're gonna go get new tires. Spare tire. They're paying for the tires. Yeah, because these, I doubt these are gonna make it. So, here not. Too bad. Yeah, it's pretty decent looking. So, other than the tires, and this is kind of rusty, so always grease your balls. So this customer was understanding enough. We are getting four brand new tires put on this camper. And I'm gonna wash my hands because this thing's kind of filthy. I wanna show you guys something. 11. Yeah, 2010. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I don't think those would have made it. 14 inch rims. Yeah, it's good we're replacing them. 11 year old tires. Yeah, I don't think I'd make it. I don't think I'd make it at all. All right, well, we figured out the jack issue. Turns out the fuse link is busted, so just hardwire that, touch it, pull that back up, and disconnect it, so that's good. And then none of the lights, none of the marker lights on the front and the five on the back work. But the marker lights on the side and the tail lights do. So kind of weird, I don't know. Now we're sitting waiting at the scale house, waiting for these guys. It's another day. I had to get up late, unfortunately. My logbook says that I guess I'm not tired around eight in the morning. So that's, I don't know, I think I left it. 
I think I got up at like six something. Um, I'm used to getting up around three. So I really don't like this new shift, but that was kind of my fault. Other than that, I got an inverter last night. So laptop's charging, my Milwaukee batteries are charging. Trucks in desail lane. Yeah, so that guy didn't get to, oh man. So I see some guys like skipping through and whatnot, but I don't know. I need to get one of those things that lets me bypass. Other than that, yeah, not liking the shift. Can't find any parking anywhere. I got lucky last night and found a really big Flying J across from a Loves. So I went and got Loves fuel in the morning because I don't really like filling up at Pilot or Flying J. They don't give me a uh, one of those cards. I got to go in after getting fuel and scan my card on my phone, and it, it's just obnoxious. So we're pulling in now. I guess they're not looking for hot shots today. They're going straight for the semis. I didn't even get the whole way on the scale when he green lighted me. So awesome. Yeah, I'm nowhere near overweight on this one. You would think with like the tinted headlights and tail lights and wide tires and all that shit, they just let you go. It's amazing the differences between like state rules and and uh, like DOT. Like I've had so many DOT officers actually look at this thing and not even give a care. So it's kind of neat actually. But then you go to Pennsylvania and drive through Carlisle and here's a fine. So it's I don't know. It's kind of weird. through another way station oh man Ugh. all right so two of them down third one to go we'll probably hit one when we hit south carolina we're getting close to south of the border so that's kind of neat well our csa score can't be too bad because that's three now that i've been able to pull through and i need some damn window tint does anybody have any solutions to not being allowed to run window tint because i really want to tint this thing after driving all day like this is just terrible so i think my solution i like the window chops that the semi guys put on uh their trucks like the old i kind of want to do them for like the driver and passenger side windows and make custom window chops i feel like that would look pretty decent do them in black and then figure out like something for the windshield so let me know what you guys think. Uh, I definitely want to try that. I don't know. I feel like it would look good. It's subtle. I don't want anything like huge, but just enough to be able to block the sunlight. Because I've been doing this with, with those and it kind of blocks it down on the side, which is nice, but they're not long enough. 